once you're strapped in and we're ready to go, everybody else has to leave. And the rider's all out there by himself. Uh, everybody else is in the blockhouse quite a distance away. They start giving a countdown over the loudspeaker and the sirens are going off, you know. It shows you how much guts he had, but he'd be sitting there looking down the track. And at the end of the track, uh, we usually had an ambulance and his Cadillac, and he knew we were gonna wind up in one of them <laughs> at the end of the run. If you imagine hurtling down a track at the speed of sound and slamming to a stop in less than a second, the, the forces that that puts on the human body are just unbelievable. Um, Stat broke ribs, um, he damaged almost every part of his body uh, in these runs, and he made these runs over and over and over again, knowing what was going to happen. On his sled run, and by the way, I was the, uh, the chase pilot. I was flying an aircraft when he made that sled run back in 1955. I actually flew the airplane right alongside of him, and that was one of the most phenomenal uh, events that I've ever witnessed. Uh, here a man went uh, almost 614 miles an hour. He knew exactly what physiologically was going to happen to him. He knew that he was going to get a horrible beating, a life-threatening uh, beating, but he, he knew that this research needed to be done. And he established the actual limit to deceleration for a man. Dr. Stapp pulled an astonishing 46.2 negative Gs on his final runs at Holloman. His body momentarily weighing in at nearly four tons as he was crushed against the straps. And I can tell you that uh, as the G's got higher, I uh, started practicing dry, dressing and undressing with the lights out. In case anything really happened to my eyes, well, I'd at least be in practice uh, taking care of myself. <laughs> uh, I had toe red out and couldn't see. Just like the picture that you saw. I can say that none of it was habit for me, and I'm so very pleased that it was survivable. But if it wasn't, well, at least we would have done our best. Dr. Stapp would recover from his early morning rides none the worse for wear, but his frequent encounters with senior Air Force management, Stapp referred to them as the mahogany desk crowd, would leave more permanent scars. Well, he was, he was tenacious and he never gave up. And uh, if he believed in something, he went out and he, he got it done. And uh, as a result of that, he stepped on a lot of toes. He wasn't much of a politician, so he never made general. Uh, most generals are politicians and the uh, stat was not. And he made a lot of folks mad at him along the way. They were envious of his success. So unfortunately, he didn't make general, but he should have. For Joe Kittinger, the next phase in Colonel Stapp's experiments would involve an epic journey to the top of the sky, piloting a craft that predated the airplane by more than a century. 